it is time for us to introduce our next guest. That would be the one, the only Tony Fleece. Uh, Tony, can you hear us? Ones. Tony? Uh, he's yeah, coming and, in and, and, and blam. Boy. Tony, can you hear I'm us? Here. All right, now we're live. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey, how's, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Oh, of course. Happy to. Wonderful. How's it going this fine night? That's all right. I went out. I had some tender greens with my lady. Uh, there you it was go. delicious. And uh, then we cleaned up the living room a little bit, and now I'm drawing my little pony and talking to you guys. As you should be. That That's is, right. Uh, everything is as it should be. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm doing my job. Yeah, <laughs> doing my job. A good job at that. Your, your job is to speak to us. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm speaking and working at the same time. I don't, I don't waste any time, I'll tell you that much. Right now. Uh, so I hear you've had an exciting stream. Oh, the stream. Oh, the stream <laughs> has been moments. intense. Yeah. We've been up since 7. Stream started at 11. We've Oof. had ups, we've had downs, we've had tragedies and epic rebounds. The stories will resound through the ages. Yeah. It was pretty intense, actually. So we had our we had one guest be a complete no show. Who was that? Uh, Kazumi, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, she's a famous person. It happens. Yeah. It happens. I uh, unplugged the lights at one point on accident. Um, you unplugged the, the computers? I unplugged the computers at a different point. We had technical difficulties <laughs> multiple times. It was intense. It was intense. Right. I'm not going to lie. It's, it sounds pretty wild. Who <laughs> all have you had on? Yeah. Who, have uh, you had two people on that I know? Started with Amy Keating Rogers. All right. Good one. And it was supposed to be Kazumi. Uh-huh. And then after that was Rebecca Shoygut. Right. Uh, that's my homegirl right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then after Mariko, Ian Keller and Bill Phillips. And then we had Annalie Heed. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, after Annalie was Josh Haber. Mm -hmm. Then we right. just got done with the EQLA crew. Oh, now that's the former EQLA crew or the best? <gasps> they officially announced the return. And now it's EQLA. not playing. Just from today. Actually, just 30 minutes ago, not former. It's breaking news. Mm, yes. Breaking news. Are they going it's back to on. Anaheim? What's, yeah. I guess I should have been listening if I wanted to know all this stuff. Right? <laughs> we, they're, they're looking at locations such as that. They don't have anything set yet. Oh. They're, they're just re greasing the wheels, as it were. Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah. It's close. I'll go to that thing. So tell us about <laughs> the beginning of your career. Yeah. How did that you got your start? In, in comics? Comics, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, well, I, when I was living in South Dakota. I worked at a TV station as a graphic artist. And I'd always loved comics, and I always wanted to be in comics um, ever since I was a kid. So I went and... Oh, I can't hear. Did it drop? Oh, is that already You're not going to get hired to be a plumber if you've never done you know, like, mm -hmm. So most people get into comics, they just make a comic. And so I did. I did one that was spelled in my lifetime. It was a graphic... Uh, it was a graphic novel. It was an autobiographical, uh, like, comic book length size comic about me mm -hmm. and getting into adventures and stuff. And uh, I did that, and then it got a publisher just by me sort of showing it around to people. And, right. And then it got out there, and I sort of was out there enough that I could start getting small jobs here and there. And I quit my regular job, foolishly, and just became <laughs> a full-time freelance artist. And yet it worked. It didn't really work right away. <laughs> <laughs> I spent like a whole year just eating food I bought at the dollar store. Oh, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually it worked. I'm doing okay now. Yeah. That's great. Well, it's good to hear. I'm glad that you were able to make it work for you. Yeah. It's a, it's a gamble that has uh, sort of paid off already. Yeah. Have, Have you, you read... read uh, in, 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 no, no, an explanation of comics? comics? What, what is, is that? that? It's, it's like, like a, a classic, classic comic book, book that explains, explains comic, comic books. books. Oh, understanding comics? Yes! Yeah, of That's, course. I, I love that. that. I, I really, really, really enjoyed reading that book. Yeah, it's but great. Yeah, yeah you've read it before? Yeah, you, you sort of read it like once every couple of years. And 
and brush up on the sort of the theory and the stuff that it's almost intuitive a lot of it Mm -hmm. Um, but it helps you know when you're doing this as your job to sort of think about it again every couple of years and just go like oh right i should be doing more of this or definitely or or you see stuff that you already do and you didn't even know you were doing it right well that's what's interesting about art is that the things that are intuitive sometimes are the hardest to come by not always but occasionally i see i can see that it's a lot of uh of training yourself making good habits and breaking bad habits what have you been working on that what what bad habits did you have to break of curiosity um i think the biggest habit that i've had to get into is just working Mm. like working a lot yeah working and sort of being in comics the way i'm in comics it's a lot of tight deadlines and Mm -hmm. i sort of take on more than i can handle and so i have to work kind of because you have to yeah i think you, you think you have to I don't think I have to anymore I just in my head I don't say no to anything because I'm afraid that I'll never get asked to do anything ever again so wow. <laughs> if I'm art like I have a I'm working on a 48 page pony thing that you guys don't know about yet Ooh. Um, but I have that to do and then if somebody else calls me or if my editor for ponies calls me and says like hey can you do a cover I just go oh of course because <laughs> yeah I'm because why trained. not yeah I'm always trained to say of course and then I sit and look at my schedule. I'm like, oh no, this is terrible news. <laughs> this is a terrible day. Do you, so do you do you spend a lot of your time working? What do you what do you spend your time doing if you're not working? Uh, uh, I hang out with my girl. Mm. Um, mostly that, or I just work. I work. I hang out with her. Uh, I go to the movies sometimes, but mostly I'm just go to work. conventions occasionally. Well, that's work. Oh, that's work for you. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's true. Work. You that's true because you run a booth and you do um, commissions and everything. So. Yeah, I, I from the minute the convention starts to the end of the convention, I am hustling. Some of those some of those little commissions that you post though on Twitter are so funny. Oh, thanks. I'm trying to pull one up. There's there's one particularly in my head. I think it was of Applejack that just made me laugh so hard. I'll have to think about it. Yeah, all right. Um, did you see the did you see the Daring Do one I did this weekend? No, I didn't. I love Daring Do, though. I'll have to look. Yeah, this guy commissioned me to do, like, a full-on Daring Do book cover, and oh, uh, awesome. I charged him a lot for it, and I gave him his money's worth. It's, That's it's so really cool. Crazy. Hey, it's like that time I gave you 25 cents for a headshot <laughs> of my pony. <laughs> That's right. And you drew I, the eye. And yeah. there you go. 25 cents worth. What what got you into Pony in particular? Did you pursue it? Were you drawn into it? How did that happen? Uh, I was I was sending samples back and forth to the editor of Ponies before he was the editor of Ponies, like right around the time mm-hmm. when they first started talking to Hasbro about doing My Little Pony comics. And I was doing Ninja Turtle samples, and it was Ooh. before there was the new Ninja Turtles cartoon, or I guess it's the not so new Ninja Turtles cartoon. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he's, the books they were doing at the time were a little more realistic, and so they did my Ninja Turtles samples were too cartoony. Mm. And that, but would I like to try drawing some of My Little Pony stuff because they were going to be showing Hasbro some samples of like what My Little Pony comics would like. So I did that, and uh, then they said, "Okay, cool." And then I didn't hear from them for a little while, and then they announced that they were doing My Little Pony comics, and that. The, Andy Price was going to draw him, so I was like, oh, well, great. <laughs> awesome. That worked, that worked out well. There you um, go. But then almost immediately after that, I got an email, like, my first one about, like, hey, would you like to do a cover for this book? We need it by this time. And I said, oh, sure, I'll do that. And then that turned into we need another cover, and then that turned into we need four more covers. And eventually I was just doing covers all the time, and then uh, pretty quick after that they launched the micro-series put me on that right away too so ever since I mean it's been my full time job pretty much from about a month after I got that first cover wow so ponies is your big thing oh yeah it's it's most of my work what I'm doing a lot more stuff also but but ponies is sort of like the constant oh there's a kitty on here I like that I um I found the daring do thing that you tweeted and I put the tweet link in the chat so everyone can see it 
Oh, yeah, I'm looking through here trying to find. I can't find that tweet. No. Oh. What can I don't you know do? What, what hilarious Applejack I've done, but I don't know. Maybe also, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was Andy Price. He does the hilarious. Maybe it, maybe it was Andy Price. That, I just draw them looking uh, proud or cute. That oh, might have been what happened. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's my it's my full time job. That's comics. that's awesome. Is that what you were is that what you were expecting when you got into comics? Um. No. I mean, I don't think anybody was expecting when the Pony comics started, that it was really going to be much of anything. I mean, they do a lot of kids' comics, and I, nobody knew that it was going to be as big a deal as it was. You know, They just figured, you know, we'll do a few of these comics, and then we'll move on and do something else. And then it turned right. out to be like a gigantic sensation, which is right. kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, because you can definitely, I'm sure you can branch out from here as well. It's It'll be kind of the launching off point. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's people who wouldn't know who I am if I was just doing, you know, one of the other comics. Right. Uh, def- definitely know who I am. And I'm happy to not branch off for a little while, you know. I'm happy to just sit yeah. and draw these horses that I've been good at drawing. <laughs> draw these money horses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. What, do you have any, um, well, I guess it's kind of a two, two-part two question. What, what comics influenced you when you were younger and... Do you have any, like, grand vision for something that you'd eventually like to get out there as an artist? That's a big question. It is. Yeah. It's it's meant to be a, a easy question. <laughs> yeah, comics that influenced me. I mean, I'm 35 now, so mm-hmm. I was a 14-year-old when Image Comics happened. And a lot of people sort of are derisive about that time in comics, but it was a a crazy exciting time if you're like a, a teenage boy because all of a sudden there's just all this wildly masculine exciting comic book art happening mm-hmm. uh, like Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and Rob Liefeld like all these guys who drew you know, crazy artwork and the stories weren't necessarily the focus you know, it was just all about you know, it was image it was image right. comics and it was about the images and uh, so I was way into all that stuff and then I started working at a comic book store, and the guys there started schooling me to, you know, what I should be reading. So I got into uh, guys like Arthur Adams, and I got into uh, Wilson Kevich. Both of these guys uh, worked on The New Mutants, which is like sort of a seminal comic for me. Mm-hmm. It was the X-Men after the X-Men uh, had sort of started to move on. It was the second class of X-Men. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that happened. <laughs> so you get you get characters like uh, Cannonball and uh, Sunspot. I'm trying to think of characters that have sort of become more popular. Mm. Kitty Pride was sort of around, but she wasn't necessarily. Oh, okay. Around. Anyway, that was a book that I was into a lot. Um, but then there are guys uh, that I would sort of come to later on, like Will Eisner, who I really love, uh, who did The Spirit, which was a terrible movie, but mm. very excellent comic book uh, it was actually like a newspaper insert it was like a newspaper comic oh wow but it was a full size it was like you get your newspaper on Sunday and have like a full size seven page comic book wow you can imagine um, so yeah there's a lot of guys and then I was also influenced a lot by like uh, Walt Disney cartoons and Andrew's cartoons and, uh, Rankin and Bass uh, Christmas specials and uh and their sort of cartoon style, like designers for them were these great cartoonists like Jack Davis and Paul Coker. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of guys. And uh, as far as grand visions, uh, I mean, I think everybody who works in comics, I guess not everybody, but everybody wants to put out their own comp. You know, like I have my stories that I want to tell for myself. Mm-hmm. And sort of put them out there, not just because I have like a, a yearning or a desire to put my own stories out in the world, which I do, but also because that's the only way to have like a, like if you own it yourself. Yeah, it comes home. from you, and yeah, that's the only way to sort of sustain yourself. You know, like ponies. When I draw ponies, it pays me once, right? And then they can print it as many times as they want, and you know, make the money over and over. Right. Yeah, that's definitely a... If you own your own thing, then it pays you every time. 
So eventually you have to retire, you know? <laughs> like, eventually you have yeah. to not work 16-hour days. And, yeah, and that's the norm for you then, is, is work just straight yeah. work all the time? Yeah, I just wake up, I go to work, and I queuing it until I can't anymore. Whew! Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's some days, man. There's yeah. days. Oh, oh man. Yeah. It's pretty well. Wild. Yeah, well, at least you have the passion for it. Like, I'm sure it gets tough, but... No, it's, my, it's, it's like my dream job, you know? It's yeah. what I've always wanted to do, so... If it means... If, if it means I have to work 16 hours a day, then that's what I have to do for now. So be it, yeah. And my, and my girlfriend, her, my fiance, is very supportive, you know? She feels the same way. That if I, you know, like, if this is what I have to do to, to have the job... A, I'm doing well at right now, and also the, the sort of the thing I've always wanted to do, and this is what I gotta do. Yeah. So that's helpful. That's you know that's um, I'm glad that we've had a lot of artists on today that have been able to relay that message to people that need to hear it about doing what you need to do and the persistence of it, and you know just working at it because it just it can get difficult. You know, oh, yeah. and, and, and that's it's, the other thing too. Is I was like, I was working this hard before My Little Pony happened, just on stuff nobody had heard of. You know? but right. I think that uh, like motion creates more motion. You know, like an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Yeah. And then if you're working and working and working, and then yeah, I think you'll just keep working. Yeah, it's got. It takes a lot of energy to start pushing it, and then it will start rolling on its own. Yeah. Very cool. You guys want to talk about ponies? You got you got pony specific questions? Or let's let's talk about pony specific questions. We can talk about just, ponies. Sure, Absolutely. we can talk about ponies. I, I love ponies. I in fact I am part of a fandom called the Bronies. If you, oh, yeah. I hadn't heard of that. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> tell me more. Do you, tell me more. Do tell. Do you like do you like writing? Because my understanding is yeah. that you get a little more leeway. And you can make some references and do some jokes. Do you enjoy being able to communicate maybe a little more directly with us through that medium? I don't know that I do necessarily. Like, I'm not saying I don't like to. I'm saying I don't know that I actually do that. Uh, really? Some of the some of the books that I've done uh, have had sort of like brony references and stuff. Like the first one that I ever did had like a bro hoop in it. <laughs> that also that comes right through the writer. You know, I just sort of draw what they tell me to draw. I see. And I, I haven't done too much in the way of like putting in sort of winks or nods to the pony culture necessarily. My feeling on it is, um, you guys like My Little Pony for being what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, and I hear a lot of people say, you know, like it's uh, it's aimed at little girls, but it has something for for grown-ups too. And and I don't think that's the case. I think it's just aimed at little girls, and it's really good. Yeah. So it's not that, because it's not like, uh, I don't even know what I would compare it to, but you know these shows where you watch them and like kids see one thing and adults see another thing. Yes. And it's the same thing. I don't think yes. Ponies necessarily has a whole lot of that. I mean, they, they had like the train spotting thing and the Big Lebowski thing, which I thought was weird that they had the Jesus because that guy's like a pedophile. Like, <laughs> it's weird. It's where there's a pedophile pony in the canon. Is um, that, which one is that? Uh, in the Big Lebowski. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I, for, I I forget about that one. Remember the guy in Big Lebowski had to go around and tell his neighbors that he's a sex offender. That's funny. They sort of just left that part out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if there there are sort of references like that, but not that much. You know, it's it's more just like a really good cartoon for little girls, and that's sort of what I try to do with the comics. It's just do oh, a really good comic book, not necessarily for little girls, but like for kids, and. I figured that's what bronies sort of respond to anyway. It's just that it's good. I'd rather have it be good and sort of well-made and put that out there. Because I think if you, like, I don't want to pander, you know? I don't want to just be like, yeah. see, see guys, it's, it's Lyra and Bon Bon and they're together, you know? And, like, <laughs> and they're doing things. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I would much rather just do a, make a good comic book and then have people go like, oh, that was a good one. Yeah, because the the nods kind of come organically from what the comic is, not from what you try and put into it. Sometimes. Yeah, and and I think you know we're 
drawing from the cartoon. Right. So stuff that's in the cartoon is going to work its way through, and stuff that sort of comes from the comics. Uh, I work stuff from the comics back into the comics, and I sort of have this habit of trying to keep all the new characters and stuff from the comics in the comics. So right. if somebody gets introduced in the micro series, they keep putting them in the comics until somebody else figures out that's what I'm doing and starts doing it too. Picks them up, yeah. yeah. No, I like that. I think, I feel like, to me, I feel like that is kind of what the intent of Ponies was. Not to present two different shows to two different audiences, but to present the same quality show to yeah. whatever audience wanted to see it. Yeah, I, th- I think that's what people respond to. It's not... Yeah. I think a show that's sort of full of references or a comic that's full of references is sort of more disposable than just a comic that's really good, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I do understand that. And I'm not it's... saying because, like, I know Andy does a lot of like, like sight gags and stuff like that, and that's not what I'm saying. Like, that that's stuff right. is cool and fun and sort of makes the comic more enjoyable. Right. I'm saying if it was, uh, like, I've done issues that were more substantial and issues that were less. And that were more just about like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And I think the the ones people respond to more are the ones that are uh, that are just more about the characters. The story. Yeah, definitely. Um, gosh, I was gonna say something. Oh, I was gonna say that I uh, I was looking through your DeviantArt gallery, looking at stuff, and um, this this uh, throwing cadence poster I have in my room, and I absolutely love it. Oh, thanks, man. It's one of my favorite things. How long did that take you to draw? I did it. I remember the layout for that one. It was really rough. And I sent it to my editor, and he was like, I don't even know what this is. I don't even know what's going on. Because <laughs> they, they requested exactly that. They said it's a, it's just Shining Armor throwing cadence off a balcony. Mm-hmm. And then they sent me the link to watch, because I hadn't, I hadn't got that far on the show yet. Right. And so I watched it, and I was like, all right, well, that's cool. And the trick was making it dynamic, you know, because in the show it's just like a profile shot, and they just picture up and hug with her. <laughs> and because there's uh, motion, it's sort of a little more dramatic, but as a still image, if I just drew a profile of Shining Armor just throwing, like, the missile cadence, it wouldn't really be a compelling image. So I, right. had, to, I had to sort of turn it and change the angle. But the layout that I sent in was very small and I should it was that, but it was just a very like scribbly version of that. Right. And uh, but then I think they turned around the inks and the colors in like half a day each. So wow, probably like a full day. Yeah. Do you do this all? Do you do your main prints digitally, or are they? How do you produce these? No, uh, I do the. I have sort of like a hybrid style. I do <laughs> layouts um, in pencil and ink, mm-hmm. and then. Sometimes I'll manipulate them, I'll scan them in and manipulate them, move stuff around, and then I send them in for approval, and then I print out a blue line version of that, and I ink over that. And I scan it back in and color it. Uh, or for interiors, I just scan it back in and I send it to Heather, who colors it now. I used to color all the books, but I realized I just did not have time for that thing. <laughs> and now it's... you've become amazing, and you have an assistant to do all your interiors. <laughs> oh, she's she's more than an assistant. She's like the main pony colors. But she, Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I, she, she's much better than I am. She can knock out so many pages so fast. Really? Yeah, it makes a lot more sense for her than it did for me. What was your favorite arc? Did you? Is this Tron? Wow, well, I'm just Googling. You have no idea of my work or my... <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Tell me, what have you done? No, no, no. I'm I'm googling <laughs> extra stuff, and I'm just oh. like, whoa. Um, so I wanted to know which one of the arcs was your favorite to write for. Well, I drew, I just do the arcs, so I don't yeah. write them. Or to draw for, sorry. Um, well, as far as like arcs, I did covers for the Nightmare Rarity arc, and I liked that arc a lot. I like I like working on that. Um, but as far as like my own issues, I think the best one that I that is not out yet, so nobody would know about it. It's uh, the Flint Flam Brothers and Granny Smith. Uh, it's Friends for My Little Pony Friends Forever number nine it comes Ooh. out in like the tenth of this month. Okay. In eight days. Uh, that was pretty fun to do. 
who's a friend of mine, Christina, uh, who's the writer on it. Mm-hmm. She is her first pony book. And so it was fun working with her, and she wrote like a script that was fun to draw and had like a lot of interesting stuff to draw. And the preview of it just went up. I don't know if you guys saw it. It had like a crazy two page spread with like every pony ever. I did see that one. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I would say that was fun necessarily to draw, but it was definitely like a cool challenge. Right. A lot of work to get all the intricate details in there. Yeah, I scheduled myself like two pages a day, generally, and, and that one came along and it was just like, nope. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not happening. <laughs> yeah, this is like a, two pages in three days. That's, so, that's funny. What is your, out of the process, what, what draws you to do it over and over and over again? Because any process, even if you love it, can get kind of tedious. Right. Um, well, I think that it's sort of like, of this kind of thing, it's the least tedious. Mm-hmm. Uh, every script, I think, is different. And so every script, and, and especially the ones I do where every time I get a script, it's new characters, it's a new story. They're all sort of one-shot stories. So every time I get it, it's a brand new thing to draw, a new story, a new scenario. So it's not that tedious. I mean, there's there are things that I do over and over again, like I draw you know, a certain pony's head a certain way enough times, but uh, I wouldn't even call it tedious. I just sort of think of it as practice. Like, every time I do it, I get better at it. Yeah. I hope. Unless I'm really in artery, in which case sometimes, you know, a page just has to be a page. Right. And you draw on those enormous pages, right? Uh, yeah, they're 11 by 17. That's crazy. Uh, and they get shrunk down to about half that size or a little less than half. Is that is that to do with the... So when you print them, they're very clear? And crisp? Uh, what is that? What is that all about? Uh, well, it's like the detail that goes into the panels. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you had to draw on the regular page size, it would just be so like uh, you just wouldn't be so, able to. Yeah, you have to really squint and like, bring out a magnifying glass and <laughs> get a cramp in your hand. Like <laughs> this way, you could draw all the details because you know if you're drawing the main book, it's six ponies sometimes in a panel or more, and so mm-hmm. you have to really you know, fill the panels up with details. So right. Yeah, and they're all like individualized. Yeah. Gotcha. This way you just draw it larger and then shrink it down. That's pretty much how all uh, sort of production artwork is. It's Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. I mean, I see that as a standard around, but I never really knew exactly why. And it, so, uh, it's actually not harder. Like, I've done pages uh, for books that I was drawing smaller, and then it's actually easier to, draw, to blow it up and draw it larger. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's not like more work to see this figure. It's just right. easier to see. I just figured maybe keeping lines parallel over a larger space might be more difficult or something like that, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. That's yeah, okay. I can handle it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good yeah. thing. Did you, did you get um, classically trained in the arts, or what is your background for it? I went to Art Institute, mm-hmm. an Art Institute school in okay. Colorado. Um, so I didn't have like a classical art training. I went to school for computer animation sort of oh. in the late 90s when that was sort of all the rage. It was just sort of like Toy Story was like you know, five years before that. And everybody, right. was, everybody was getting really pumped about the idea of computer animation. And I went through the whole program just to sort of realize that it wasn't for me necessarily mm-hmm. um, but I got out and I got a job like I guess as a graphic designer pretty quick after that and from there just started doing you know, my own artwork and, and uh, but I learned enough at school about you know the work and, and techniques and stuff like there's a lot that I learned at school that I sort of took with me but I was always taking art classes in school and extracurricular ones so I wasn't classic, classically trained. I'm not like a right. classically trained painter or anything. I've taken art instruction my whole life. So would you would you recommend that if any of our listeners are listeners? Yeah, listeners are interested in pursuing a similar path. Is it is it a good idea to get some oh, yeah. some training in I if mean, you can? Or it's just yeah. I mean, absolutely. Even if you have sort of like a natural talent, mm-hmm. it's, it's sort of part of 
taking your career seriously is or taking your your talent seriously is saying like well I want to uh, invest in this and sort of improve on it uh, I was just sort of recently thinking about taking more classes or trying to find a way to make another sort of leap, a quantum leap from where I am right now to sort of like what's the next stage in my artistic evolution. I'm always thinking about how to get better. I think definitely going to school is a, is a good way to sort of, uh, even if even if you're not going there just to learn the art, just to say I'm taking, you know, I'm taking a step towards being an artist, you know, this is important to me, and this is an investment of my time, money, or whatever. Right, it's my, kind of like... Or, or my parents' money. Or my parents. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a a contract with yourself that you get yourself to those classes and yeah. try and absorb what they're teaching you. And, and if you don't, if, it's not, if it turns out it's not for you, then you should know at that point, like, okay, well, then I should have a different kind of job. True, definitely. Were you were you always going to be doing this, or did you have maybe an inkling of a different idea for your life? Um, no, I think it was pretty much always something like this. Yeah. I when I was in high school, I sort of I had art, and I would like I was in like choir. I would do like you know, the play musicals and stuff like that. But I sort of knew, I mean, as improbable a career as comic book artist it is, I think, uh, like Broadway musician for a, like a chubby <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, teenager is sort of like even way more improbable than being a comic book artist. So um, I sort of went this way. Right. And, and this was the only thing I ever uh, sort of aimed at. Yeah, and it's definitely worked out, so that's that's good. Yeah, I mean... So it's going good right now. It's great. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Well, yeah. It's always. I mean, are, you're you're technically fl- freelance, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not employed. So I'm yeah, it's. Whew, man, scary day. Yeah, it is. I just got uh, insurance for the first time in. Uh, Congratulations. Six, six years, Obamacare. It's great. Congratulations. That's great. Thank you. I went to a doctor when it wasn't an emergency. That was weird. Wow, you got a checkup. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Oh, I um, gosh, what was it? Yeah, just flew out of my head. There was a question in there. Well, I got some. Yeah, go for it. Talk to me. <laughs> so you do a lot of art commissions at conventions. Uh-huh. What's probably some of the most interesting commissions you've done? Mm. Hmm. Uh, well, OCs are always like sort of interesting to draw. <laughs> I did, uh, like, always, I did one this last weekend that was one of these red ones. Oh, yes. There's there's no red ponies in the show, but there's a lot of sort of dark red OC characters, and uh, it's always a challenge to make them look uh, as cute as the the regular, as the ponies with the lighter colors look, you know? Right. The only red one is Big Mac that I could think of. Yeah, but he's even sort of like a light red. Pastel, yeah. He's not pink, but he's not. He's not like blood red. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Like this dark blood red and black. Yeah. Pony. So, uh, I haven't had that many. I mean, I think the fans sort of like, I don't know if the word is out on me that I'm not playing around, <laughs> but if people sort of want like drunk ponies or sexy ponies, I usually tell them. I tell them. I, have a, I have a job that I'm keeping, so <laughs> I'm not. I'm not interested in that. Uh, so I don't get that many super weird requests. It's actually, I mean, I'm cool with it because I'm just happy to draw the ponies, you know. <laughs> like, but every once in a while I go like, I wish I'd get something crazy today. The weirdest uh, is like when somebody wants me to sign some sort of, like I had somebody come up to me. I'll tell you my uh, favorite sort of dichotomy of pony fan story. Uh, I was at a show in uh, Sac- Sacramento. And it's a one-day show, and it, right in a row I had these two experiences. This girl comes up, this teenage girl, uh, or maybe she was like 20, and she brought up comics, uh, like well-worn copies of my comics, and you know, you could tell they've been read a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. And she uh, had like tears in her eyes, and she said that this was the thing that she and her brother can do together, and he has autism, oh, wow. and it's like the only 
It's like one of the few ways that they can connect with each other. They read these comics together and they watch the show together and they can sort of connect on that level. And it was really beautiful. And like, I got emotional about it. And it was just really nice. And then, so I gave her a hug and I signed all the stuff for her and sent her on her way. And then the very next person that came up was this dude, uh, unshowered. And he had a, a rolled up piece of paper, like a large piece of paper. Mm. And uh, he, un- he had a glint in his eye that I could tell something was going to happen. Okay. And he unrolled it, and it was human versions of, like, Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash. And they had big boobs pushed oh. up against each other, and they were, like, making out. <laughs> and he said, like, awesome, right? Can you sign this for me? And I was like, <laughs> absolutely not. I will not oh. sign that for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, like, right not especially, row. especially after that. Oh, man. Yeah. Sort of like the two sides of the coin. Yeah. Around the row. <laughs> but, that's that's what happens, man. Yeah. So Ooh. that's, I mean, not really a weird sketch request, but that's sort of like one of the, the funnier encounters I've had. Yeah. Well, and you actually got a, uh, a quick sketch, sketch request from us when you were at BronyCon. Uh-huh. Uh, it is of Mended Dreams here. Oh, you is it your, your character? Yeah, yeah, it's our OC. OC. Yeah, it's our OC for the convention. Did I do it all right? Oh, it's great. It's oh, wonderful. We're, uh, we're showing it to the camera right now. Yeah, we're letting the stream check it out. And it's my understanding that this is included in the raffle, right? Yeah. So we'll be raffling off Ooh. these sketches. That is a $20 value, ladies and gentlemen. At least. At yeah, least. It's got a signature. Least. Oh, 25 Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I drew two eyes, so that's another 50 cents. <laughs> wow. <laughs> as well as Flam. Yeah, so we have this one, one, one from Tony. Yep. One from Heather Breckel. Mm-hmm. And we have one from uh, Katie Cook. You guys could be close to Andy. Those three will be raffled off as a set. That's a, that is a steal. I'm totally... It is. 50 cents for him to draw me some eyes. 50 cents for eyes. You're, he's right. <laughs> Len, do you, do you take po- PayPal? Len can send you some 50 cents for some eyes. Some eyeballs? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not accepting commission requests right oh, now. Oh, no. Way not too much to draw. Oh, gosh. Right. Guess I'm going to have to catch him at a convention. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. So, um, I'd like Ken to go ahead and, and talk about the uh, how much you need to donate to enter yourself in games. Uh, should we have this be the most? Because this is the, this is a very, very, very yeah. nice set of things. It's so true. Very, 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 very. One of a kind. Three of three. I kinds. have a lot of berries for how very. It is. <laughs> three of three, win. Yeah. So, I I plan on having the set for the cheap amount of ten dollars for one raffle <laughs> amount. Ten. That, that, that's actually pretty cheap for this amazing, not only this amazing artwork, but also a comic that comes with this amazing artwork. There you go. So both of the artworks and the comic, $10 in the chat. If you go ahead and write something like comic, we'll enter you into that part of the raffle. Uh, I'll put the donate link uh, because the chat. Because all these raffles took over 12 hours to do, and not everybody had the money right now, we're going to have another, we're going to give you guys 12 hours, 12 full hours mm-hmm. to bid on these and put in all your raffles and during the last hour of our stream we will be having we, we, we will raffle them all and tell you exactly who won and we'll and just in case one of them didn't want it or something at the end we'll double check with them so does the um does the donation thing have their email so we can contact them yeah. if they're okay yeah. so we'll contact you by email if you're not in the stream um at 10 a.m tomorrow for the raffle and if you are we'll announce them then so. Yeah, and if you if you and if you're just donating to donate, you don't have to donate for anything specific, or you can save your money for a bit later when we're gonna do some amazingly crazy stuff. Yeah, we've got even more coming. We have uh, we have maybe a hair color to be changed. <laughs> even <laughs> hair color to be changed. What? What? Yeah. Right here, right after a minute, whenever it happens. Right after whenever we raffle. Right after whenever that actually Yeah, because that's not a raffle. That's a, <laughs> I was going to say right now. If somebody donates that exact here. amount, then I'm willing to do it. Well, there you go. <laughs> so same thing for a lot of things. We have a lot of different separate stuff that's coming. These are the these are the raffles we wanted to have specifically for our amazing guests. Because all of our amazing guests have so many good things. Especially I have some so many good piece. things. 
so many good things. How's the art coming that you're working on? Can you tell us anything about it besides the fact that it has lines? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's been announced yet. I can tell you. Here's how's this for a hint? I'm drawing a character that one of your guests today has played. Ooh, ooh, that does narrow it down a little bit, but not a lot mm -hmm. because we've had an enormous had amount of guests. A number of guests. Let me see a if I can tell guests. you anything else. Very uh, good. It's gonna have. Gotta, I, I gotta be very cryptic. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what. I think I can tell you without telling you that you are correct. <laughs> and that's who I'm drawing. <gasps> oh man. <laughs> Is it a horse, though? Is it a person? I can't say. That's fine. That's fine. You know what? I just, I won the internet right there. Yeah. That was like a one in a I love it. Really, if I could tell you guys, oh, like, I, so much secret stuff is going on here today, just coincidentally, at the house. I saw stuff today that you guys will not see for a little while. That was pretty exciting. Oh, well, this is good. Um... Uh, and generally, we don't see anything. Like, the, you know, we just have to Google for our reference and stuff, but every right. once in a while, we'll get sent something that's just like, oh, check this out. And oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, check this out. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited. This is going to yeah. be really fun. How long, oh, is, yeah. how long is this There's... process? We didn't talk about that. How long does the process take from the person who, you get the script to draw mm -hmm. and ink and everything to you send it off to get colored or, you know, if you, if you finish the color to get printed or whatever the continuation of the process is? This one, I'm on a pretty tight deadline right now, um, but the script showed up uh, middle of last week, mm -hmm. and I've got until October 20th to have the whole thing in. Okay. It's, 40, it's 48 pages, so I think that's like 48 days from now. Okay. Uh, so. And you I said two pages a day, so. Yeah, but I still have to. I also have to lay them all out. So I can usually lay out like two or three pages a day, and then right. I can ink two pages a day. And if I'm laying out and inking at the same time, I can usually like lay out one, ink two, or lay out two, ink one. Like right. I sort, so it's... I sort of top out at like three things a day. Well, they're so but, intricate. Yeah, and there's a lot of panels on these pages too. It's like most of them are like five, five or six panel pages. How does that paneling work for you? Do you? I mean, because they're such dynamic panels. Do you have a set of panels that you like to go to, or are you inventing the the presentation each page? I'm inventing the presentation each page. I mean, I have, if, if anybody were to look at, like, the whatever six or seven books that I've done together, mm -hmm. you would see sort of repeated panel layouts, you know, like right. probably one, one big one at the top, and then, like, you know, four smaller squares underneath that, or I'll do, like, one big one at the top, and then three, or I'll do a full bleed, and then, you know, like, smaller panels underneath, or full bleed at the bottom. Like, stuff sort of just gets in my rotation and gets used over and over again. But it, it rarely says in the script, like, here's the, the layout that the pages are going to look at. Right. It, says, it says in the script, this page will have this many panels, and then this panel this happens, and the next panel this happens. And oh, so it does have a number of panels, though. Like, you need to oh, yeah. get this many panels. Yeah, and then that's just sort of... Uh, it helps the writer to figure out what all will fit on a page, and it helps me just by not, like... If it just had a list of dialogue, and then mm -hmm. I had to figure out what the action was on the page, I think ah. it it's a, adds a whole other step. That would take... Yeah, it would take even longer. Yeah. Well, the interesting... So, th oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh no! I mean, I can't even. Go, you may go ahead. I have no. Oh, idea. sorry. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the interesting part because I'm just thinking about how the comics look compared to the show, and I'm trying to nail down exactly why they have a distinct feel. Because as you said, they're not really pandering to the brony audience. They they still are true to the feel of the show. And yet they, they, they feel uniquely their own. And I'm trying to determine why that is um, exactly. Do you have any insight into why the comics feel like their own thing and at the same time are familiar? Yeah, well, I mean, the, I think all, every artist has their own different take on the ponies or mm -hmm. their own style that they bring to it. Like, I draw differently than Andy Price draws or than Agnes Karabowska draws. I think that just comes from us being different artists. And when you're in animation, especially on ponies where it's a, it's a flash show, you know, they right. sort of 
build the things, they design them, and they all can draw on model and match model, but uh, once you build the ponies and, and the, the rigs, then you just sort of move that stuff around. I mean, I'm not <laughs> belittling what they do. I'm just <laughs> sure. saying, like, they don't have to draw the pony on model every time. Right. Um, and I think the nice thing about the relationship that we have with Hasbro and with IDW is that they're not asking us to do, like, totally on model pony comics. They sort of like for us to do our own thing a little bit, which is nice because I feel like I can do uh, emotions better when I draw the faces like slightly different. Like you see sometimes uh, like in the Equestria Girl, I did the Equestria Girls comic mm -hmm. and when you watch the Equestria Girls movie you see sort of like they can push the emotions really hard but when you have like that front view it looks different when someone's sad than when you have it in the side view or the three quarters view. Right. Um, so I think it's just like I fall back into my own style and it's easier for me to uh, like to tell a story from that way than it be for me to try and hit pony model every time. You know? I think and that's where I would be working harder towards that than I would be to telling a story. Right. Yeah. And then you get these unique expressions that really are extremely entertaining um, that maybe wouldn't show up because they yeah, wouldn't they, they don't translate of, well yeah only in the comics mm -hmm. sort of things um, the first couple of issues that I did I was really uh, really really trying to hit the model and mm -hmm. trying to hit and trying to like this is what the show should look like I did all the colored lines and that took forever <laughs> um, and and I felt like my stuff didn't start to really get good until I just realized like I should just be myself. You know, like everybody else is here being themselves. Like Andy Price isn't sitting there killing himself trying to draw Fluttershy the way she looks on the show. Right. Uh, and uh, and that's when everybody started to like me. You know? <laughs> Up until that, there was like, oh God, it's fleece, fleece is on this issue. <laughs> and now I feel like some of them still say that, but I think that's just because they're used to saying it. You know, like right. But everybody else is like, oh, this was a nice issue. That's cool. Yeah, it's what was what was the development of your own personal style like, kind of in that. Um, well, I, uh, there's a comic book artist I love who says that his style is the deadline style, and I think that's, <laughs> that's a lot of what it is. You know, it's just about what I can draw in the time that I have to draw it. You know? um, but I mean, I got to talk about my influences for like my cartoons and the comic book artists that I love, and I think a lot of that shows up in my own stuff but right. I think it's mostly just I draw I wouldn't call it a style so much as just like this is the best I can do right now you know yeah yeah it's the best you can do with the tools you have in, yeah. the, in the time you have yeah that makes sense has it been what other things do you like to draw like on your own time if if you ever discover some uh, I don't know I was, I was somebody asked me about this at this convention I was at this weekend in Texas Mm -hmm. And I really can't remember the last time I drew some of them. It's really sad. Like you hear comic book artists a lot of times say, like, oh, I never get a chance to read comics. Uh, yeah. I'm still busy drawing them. So I always think that's kind of a cop out. It's like, you should pay attention to it's your job. But, uh, <laughs> but I definitely hear a lot of people saying that they don't have time to draw for fun anymore, which makes a little more sense because. It's like if I have time to be drawing. When I worked at McDonald's, they said if you got time to lean, you got time to clean, and I think that's the same thing. In, in drawing, if I have time to draw, I should be working. Right. Because there's no end of things for me to draw. Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, you can study from life. You can study from other people's work. Just go yeah, on. and that I like to. I do like to do that when I get a, like when I end up somewhere and I have the time I like to draw from life sit around and draw uh, I like go to a zoo or a museum right so you've got your sketchbook and you go check out things and I, I'm, I'm not going to lie and say that I do that all the time I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. well yeah nobody, nobody would do it all the time when I when I get the chance it's nice uh, but I, like I said I can't remember the last time I drew for fun gotcha oh yeah I could imagine I could but imagine. it is but like my every day is fun so that that sort of balances that, you know. Right. I I love the process, mm -hmm. and so no matter what I'm drawing, 
like if I hated ponies, which I do not, uh, right. I still love my job because of <laughs> the process of doing it. That's really good. That's really good because then the characters that you're drawing and the stuff that you're doing is kind of icing on the cake to yeah. the basics that you already like. Like a lot of times I uh, do storyboards uh, for this taco place in the Midwest called Taco John's. I don't know if you guys are familiar. I have never heard of it, no. Uh, it's sort of like the Midwest. It's better than Del Taco. Huh. But uh, I think it is. It has tater tots. Uh, mm. They're called potato olays. They're delicious. Uh, but I do their storyboards a lot of the times. I work for the ad agency that does their commercials. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love tacos, but I would not mm. sit around and draw them for fun. You know? Fair but, enough. But when I'm working on that stuff, I still love my job because, you know, because I love the process. Because it's what you want to be doing. Yeah. That's awesome. We, because I've done, you know, I've worked retail and I worked, you know, I did graphics for a TV station and stuff and mm -hmm. all that was sort of just the stuff I had to do, not the stuff I wanted to do. Right. Well, it's about time to wrap it up. We had you for about an hour. Uh, uh, thank you for not asking me who my favorite pony was ha. or... <laughs> Well, who my least favorite pony was, or any That's of those questions hilarious. that I've been at a million times. Of this course. Been, I guess you guys probably already know if you've been to a convention or something, I've been sat in any panel. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I definitely like to dig into... Uh, for me, personally, I really enjoy the show because of the heart and the, and the work that goes into it. Yeah. And there's a lot to be discussed there, so thank you so much for spending your time with us. Yeah, true. It was Great. nice talking to you guys. Yeah, okay. wonderful good. to talk to you, too. Good luck with the 24 hours. Thanks. Have a good night. Yeah, talk to us night. at about 10 a.m. tomorrow. Right. <laughs> I'll be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with that. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night, Tony.